well, spirit appeared alongside you in a photograph. How would you even know if it was a spirit? And what if that photograph was taken in an old operating theatre? Karen Howell is the curator of the Old Operating Theatre Museum in London. She posed at work one day for a photograph. And when the photograph was developed, something rather strange appeared to flash across her neck. It showed um, a sort of flash going to the, um, across to the side, as if it's going across, leaving, if you like. A flash in a photo is hardly unusual, but another photograph taken shortly later featured the same unexplained flash. There was a photograph taken here and then there's a photograph taken in the other room. In between there was a clear photograph um, and it actually just exploded across his face this time. So it's in a different place, uh, the actual yellowing or whatever, the actual flash. Um, and obviously it was a bit of a shock because it is quite a surprise from um, when you've just seen two very clear Polaroids. So obviously you don't really know what it is. Psychic Lily Dolland visited the old operating theatre to see if she could unravel the mystery. And she had a firm conclusion about Karen's photo. The vibration I felt with that was quite strong psychic power. See, everywhere has psychic power and every so often these type of photographs show flashes here, there, or lights, or sparks, and it's psychic power, it's build up. There's nothing wrong with it, because psychic power is what we're all about. We build up a psychic power. And Stuart's photo? Spirit people are real individuals. Truthfully, they're real. Okay, they have no body, but they are solid matter. They're solid substance. Otherwise, how would we capture them on film? Image consultant Simon Bromage disagrees with Lily and believes that both photos are merely a fault in the camera. Looking at those two uh, smaller photographs there, they're Polaroids. Um, <clears throat> what I would say looking at them is that basically um, in a Polaroid you have two rollers which basically puts the pressure onto the uh, donor side of the Polaroid which would transfer the image to the receiver side. If the uh, pressure on the rollers wasn't exactly right all the way across the rollers, then uh, a certain area might not, on the donor, hit the receiver. If that happened, then you'd get an un undeveloped area of the print. However, in between the photo of Karen and the photo of Stuart, a completely normal picture was taken. We asked Simon how this was possible. The only way you would get uh, a picture in between these two images where you didn't have the problem would be if the uh, pressure on the rollers for that time basically um, were putting the right amount of pressure across the Polaroid, which isn't the case on the other two pictures. The mystery deepens as a photo taken several years earlier has a similar unexplained object in the exact same spot. The first one is uh, one that we often show to children and say, oh, there is a ghost. Um, because it's more interesting for children to go around and find the ghost and perhaps some of the things that are here are sometimes a bit morbid. So to find the ghost is actually more um, intriguing for them and um, it just makes them at peace a little bit more, a bit more inquiry. But it actually is in the site we're standing now and, and you could actually see that there's a... a, a you can see across that there's actually... Um, it's moving across into the centre space. The space that Karen is referring to is the old apothecary that was used to store herbs used in medicinal compounds. In 1822, part of the herb garret was converted into a purpose-built operating theater in the days before anesthetics and antiseptic surgery had been invented. Lily Dolan believes the mystery figure was actually there to study the early forms of surgery. Well, as I held that, I could sense um, a, a great interest by the spirit person who was standing there and she's a student from obviously the, the time when this was all going on here in this building and um, cutting up and all that business so she was a very interested student and obviously she came in at the time to see what was going on when we were taking the photograph and she was obviously meant to be captured on it but you can only see the back of her you see the puff sleeve and the outfit of the gown and sort of a, a head effect even sceptic Simon Bromage was puzzled by the photograph. These cases don't happen very often, that's why this one looks a little bit strange and sticks out from the ordinary. Basically, looking at, looking at it, it's, it's, it's quite a lot of, um, there's quite a lot of an image in the actual diffused area. If you was holding back the area underneath an enlarger, you wouldn't get any image in there, it would just be light. 
so uh, I don't think it is that. So yeah, once again, it's a bit of a mystery why you've got definition in, in, in the diffused area. If it is a spirit in the photograph, then how is it possible to capture such a phenomenon on film? A photograph is picking up a memory. And obviously, when such instances as we've just described, that um, students still very interested in what's going on, because they live on, they live on throughout eternity, and such people like that, I call them spirit people because they are. A ghost is what you see on a television screen, a flash or whatever. The spirit person, they're still living, they're still existing, and they come through. It could be a spirit, but having said that, I would like to see their negative from which this print was taken. To capture a spirit on film is through mere chance, according to Lily. Such unexplained events can never be planned. We can't plan anything like that. They happen just out of the blue spontaneously, if it's meant to be. Um, it's just one of those things. You, you just can't, you know, say, I want a spirit person here and we'll take a photograph. It just occurs. And it's, it's obviously a phenomenon, a beautiful phenomenon. Perhaps a key to the unexplained events is the building itself and its history. According to Karen Howe, it seems the male members of staff are more susceptible to ghostly encounters. Not all the men, but the men that we know, we be, one of them believes that um, there are footsteps in the theatre. Uh, my own feeling on that is that it's to do with the overlay of floorboards, but um, I have heard them, there's no doubt about it, but I don't feel agitated because it feels like, the, to me, the building breathes a bit, if you know what I mean. Um, and um, there's also um, people who come in who are so very sensitive, actually can't go in the theatre for very long. Um, and that's just a cold feeling, and it may just be emotional. In this actual area, I mean, obviously you have plants which is created through God's love and peace and calmness, which overpowers that terrible feeling I picked up when I walked into the actual operating theatre where the students sit round there observing what's going on and you have these helpless patients writhing and screaming. I picked up as I walked in there unbearable pain and I, and, and I was told the screams were absolutely unbearable. So is it possible to capture spirits on photographs? Maybe the surroundings that you take the photographs in have a lot to do with that. In a place like this where so much went on, perhaps it's not surprising that some of those imprints have even been captured on film.